Okay, good morning. I wanted to give a quick follow-up to uh, my time in F3. Um, not necessarily on the, like, how it went side, but on the terms of, like, technical details and whatnot, and um, just to show you kind of some of the things that I changed on my quads as a result of being there, so things that I didn't necessarily anticipate ahead of time. So this is the part of the video that I do not want my wife to see. <laughs> Um, this is the true cost of F3 for me in terms of just parts alone that were broken. Over the course of the weekend, I broke 13 props and at a buck 50 a prop for these tri blades, it ended up being about $19. I had a VTX, um, an FX799T uh, VTX burnout on me, which we'll talk about in a second, um, and that cost about $35. That was very unfortunate, um, but hopefully preventable. Um, when that burned out, it actually caused an electrical short that you can see just fried up the carbon fiber here. Um, and so I need to replace this so that I can have this um, VTX mount again. And so that QAV 180 top plate cost me, you know, 12 bucks. So in total, just for parts alone, the entire weekend cost me $66.5. I'm not even counting this because it was free. I want to talk about what happened with my uh, QAV210 top plate here. Essentially what happened was that um, the, the XT60 here, the pigtail, um, had a um, slight break on the wire. And that wire, um, conducted with the carbon fiber bottom plate here, shot electricity presumably up through one of these standoffs and into, um, it, it uh, connected with the VTX uh, SMA adapter, which was metal and touching straight on the short here. So it shorted all the way across through here. There was a massive um, electrical arc. I'm kind of bummed nobody got it on video. Um, and you can see that the whole carbon fiber has become completely delaminated and it's just turning into a, essentially hair because that's, you know, that, those are the individual strands of carbon fiber. Um, so I've got to replace this whole top plate here eventually. Unfortunately, at the same time, the grounding wire for my VTX here got totally toasted up. You can see the um, the wire is now exposed and the whole the plastic just got eaten away like that. So so I don't know if this thing is actually fried, but I'm kind of afraid to test it to find out. Um, so we'll see about that. So at the event, they gave us their own VTX, which is the which was the Immersion RC race band one, and this is the the six or five five plug cable for that that sends audio, video, and uh, po powers your camera. And on this end was just the power for that thing. Um, and so what they asked us to do at the event was to wire it up so that we could swap these in and out. So I left these cables really long and just ran them through this top plate here, and I could swap on and off their uh, their VTX um, as needed. In addition, they asked us to be able to pow provide um, or to power a uh, uh, IR transponder, which I can't find mine right now, otherwise I'd show you what that looks like, but that's what is used for the timing system. And to do that, I just wired this uh, female servo lead straight into the five volt coming from the Polulu that is powering my flight controller. And that made it really easy to um, just pop that on and off as needed because they would give me a different one each time depending on where I was in the the race lineup But now that I don't have their VTX um, I need to swap mine back on So now for future events, I've got this whole um, Immersion RC cable that I don't need to do anything with it can I can just put it back in here without having to desolder anything. I have it hooked up to this um, JST connector. The cable that they gave me has a female lead and I just soldered a male lead straight onto it. And I can take my own VTX, which has that same female lead on it, right there. Plug it back in. Bloop. And now I've got my own VTX hooked up, ready to power again. And I have this female servo lead that I can now connect back to the camera, all without doing any soldering. 
So now I have the other end of the cable here. This is um, a servo lead that's broken in half to uh, the three pin uh, micro JST that goes into the camera. So all I have to do is plug this guy right back into the camera and then plug the uh, signal and power connections back into the video transmitter or yeah back into the video transmitter and now we have a full uh, FPV system hooked up ready to go zero soldering so you can do it in the field really fast when you need to for a race event there's probably a little bit more wiring than there needs to be um, but you know what that's okay it's it's a very simple solution and it doesn't require much fiddling at all Thank <laughs> you.